sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild god and sinners reconciled joyful tuning in online with us. We're glad you're doing that as well. Do you guys know what in excelsis Deo means? Yeah. Right? That's first service too. I was like, you all have been singing this song your whole life. You don't even know what you're singing. I didn't know either, so I had to look it up. It's called Glory to God in the Highest, and how fitting for Christmas that we would come together and do that. Um, a couple announcements. We're going to do it again on Christmas Eve. So if you are here in town, we'd love for you to join us at 4 or 5.30. We have two service times. We are going to live stream both of those service times. So if you're feeling uncomfortable still with uh, in-person services, you have both options if you want to tune in with us at home um, or if you're on the road traveling as well. Uh, the other thing to say is we have gifts that are due back on the angel tree. So if you took one of those ornaments, we need that. If you forgot it today, try like first thing in the morning if you can. Um, the other things that were just gift cards, those can come in when it's, when it's convenient for you. Just bring them to the office. And then at four, parents... 
Uh, especially if you're at home with kiddos, we have a huge happy birthday celebration. It's um, on our YouTube channel. It'll go live at 4 o'clock. We would love for you to tune in as a family and have fun with us celebrating the birth of Jesus. If you missed the 4 p.m. live premiere, you can always check that out later, too. But we hope you'll celebrate with your kiddos. Um, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. So let's sing glory to God in the highest, raise our voices, and continue in worship.
ringing through the heavens, the long-awaited Savior, come to set the captives free. Come to set the captives free. Come set us free. This is always a special time in our worship service where we get to all come together as one and hold up our voices to God. So would you bow your heads with me and in one heart and one spirit? Let's pray together. In the words of the song, hope has a name, Emmanuel, God with us. The light of the world who broke through the darkness. All hail the King, Emmanuel. The light of the world, the glory of heaven. Jesus, that's all about you. You are the hope of all creation. There is not an ounce of hope today that doesn't come from you. Jesus, you are our King. We trust you to rule in our lives. We trust, no matter how dark the world can get, that you still are the light that can break through the deepest darkness. Jesus, you are a righteous judge, which reminds us that each of us have fallen short, even this week, of what you expect of us. And Jesus, we as one body of believers, this is Christmas week coming up. We would like to approach this Christmas with a clean heart, a healthy mind, and an excited spirit. But to do that, 
Let us bring to you, Jesus, those times this week where we fell way short. And let's just take a moment to remember those things that separate us from you. And Jesus, the Father has given you all power and authority, so we ask for forgiveness. We ask for your help. We give this up to you. You forgive as far as the east is from the west anything that we did this week. But not only that, Jesus, we ask you to help us walk in a different direction this week, focused on you, celebrating you. Jesus, we lift you up as our long-awaited Savior. We didn't see it coming, like the song says, this story of redemption, which started in a manger and ended in in an empty grave. And now, Jesus, you are our song on our horizon. We walk today with our eyes on one thing, eternity with you, the glory of heaven that you have promised us. And Jesus, you came to set the captives free. You came to set us free from whatever is holding us from you. The song reminds us, come if we are broken. Come if we are searching. Come if we need healing. And there are some families in our body that I really want to speak of today that need some healing. First, hold up Amanda Hendricks, young family, young mom who got a, who's been battling cancer and this week got the shocking news that they're moving her into hospice. Father, as a church, we rise up in prayer around this family. That maybe Christmas means something that's never meant before. But Father, get your church to rise up in prayer for the Hendricks family, also for Ron Wellington. I just think of him healing uh, from that second surgery. Pray he bounces back, and we pray for Ron Fear and his family as Ron handed off his mom, Alice, to Jesus this week. Jesus, I'm so glad you're there. You are where we find it. You are where we find the freedom from our brokenness, the freedom when we're searching, and the freedom when we need healing. Father, I pray for our graduates who have endured a lot this semester. Father, your hand is on them as they move forward in the directions and the plans that you have for them. And I pray for Pastor Eric today as he brings God's word to inspire us through God's spirit to be ready for this special week. Thank you, Jesus, for Pastor Eric. Thank you for a good friend. And thank you for such a blessing that he is to all of us. Now, Jesus, let us prepare a room for you in our hearts this week. And in your name, all God's people say excitedly, amen. 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 Hey, one thing we want to do before I jump off the stage is we like to honor graduates. You know, graduation is kind of all over the board a little bit, so we want to take this moment. We honored uh, some in the first service this morning, but if you are graduating from high school early or from college mid-semester or graduate school, we would love to honor you. Those who are online, uh, we would like to know who you are. In case we're missing you, let us know. You're, uh, those on Facebook Live, let us know who we can honor there. We have a gift for you. Um, this book is, uh, or this gift, sorry, we'll keep it secret, is like, like you cannot live through life without this. And so this is exciting. So if you, and with COVID, we're going to be a little bit safe, but if you're graduating or gra this semester, would you stand up? And, and there's a couple things we want you to share. Would you do that with us? Be brave, because this church really wants to celebrate with you all your hard work. Come on, Mike. <laughs> so everybody, this is Mike Carson. Mike is graduating, if I can say, from Iowa State University with what's your degree? Masters of Science and Architecture. Would you all give him a big round of applause? <laughs> I'm going to hand it so you can just kind of see. And Mike, what's next steps for you? Well, I'm going to try to 
Yeah, so teaching is next. Congratulations. Is there any others that are graduating here mid-semester that we can honor today? And those online, please let us know, and we will honor you and make sure we get you this gift also. All right. Eric, ready for you. Well, good morning. My name is Pastor Eric Norris. I'm Disciple of Connection and Discipleship here at Westview, and uh, it's always an honor to get to, uh, to stand and proclaim. Uh, a couple things. Um, I was the recipient of carolers, so those that, of you that caroled to my house, thank you. For those of you that caroled to others' houses, thank you. Um, it, it made my night uh, even more pleasant. Um, and then I did get, somebody asked me after the first service, the last time I spoke, I said I couldn't find my real Bible my pastor's Bible. So in the last box I unpacked this week, in fact, I, uh, I found my, my pastor's Bible. And like I said, it doesn't mean I didn't have a Bible. I have stacks of other Bibles that I use for reference. This is just my name with one with my name on it that makes me feel like a pastor. So especially when I'm up here, it's good to have my pastor's Bible. Um, if you are online or you're joining us, you probably received this connection card. Uh, there are some places that you'll take some notes uh, and, and follow along today. If you're a guest and would like to fill out the, uh, the connection card at the front of this, let us know who you are. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to pray for you. So if you have a prayer request, you can put that there as well. So if you've been following along this Advent, um, you know that our series revolves around white ex uh, elephant exchange gifts. And for those that need a reminder of what that is, it's that wonderful uh, exercise where we gather family or friends in a room and we all bring something, uh, something than something and then you get to trade back and forth and hopefully you end up with the, the something that's worth something and not the something that you just give the next year in the white elephant exchange but that's kind of what we've talked about is the need to exchange we've talked about that uh, the need for hope to exchange hopelessness and broken promises for hope and we talked about that hope is a person and then we talked about peace, that peace is not the absence of trouble it's the presence of Christ and the, in fact peace is is a person. And then uh, Pastor Dylan helped us understand that joy is not about presence, it's about the presence. It's about the presence of Christ, it's about the presence of family and friends. This morning as we wrap up the, the white elephant, um, we're going to talk about love. And so what do we need to exchange? And so I brought an example. This was a white elephant gift that I received, and I was trying to remember how long ago it was. It's been years, probably 15 or 16 years. And so the reason I brought this is not every white elephant gift is one of those that you just immediately go home and, and put someplace until the next white elephant gift. Occasionally you get one that's fairly useful. Uh, so I use this. It's the trash can under my desk, which sounds not very um, gift worthy, but it really is very functional. It's, it's kind of pretty. Uh, it's not too bad. It was made by my nephew, and so it was made with uh, some bit of love. Uh, and so I've, I've kept it for years. And so not every white elephant gift is a bad thing. And we've talked about in the past few sermons the need to exchange some, some awful stuff, some, some brokenness and some fear and anxiety and things like that. Well, this morning, as we talk about what we need to exchange, we're going to exchange love for love. Now, you might be thinking, what's that all about? And so that's what I'm here to help us with today. Is a, so what do we need to exchange? We talk about exchanging love for love. I think to fully appreciate Advent and to fully embrace what the ad, meaning of Advent is in our discussion this morning, it's important to understand one foundational truth. And that foundational truth is also love is a person. And in fact, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, the, the verse is on the screen, it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because, because God is love. Love is a person. And so if love is a person, then I would submit to you that apart from God or in the absence of God, it is impossible to fully understand love to be fully loved or to love you see love does not exist without God there's a, a love void it's the total opposite in fact if love if God is not in our world if, if the God of love is not present then love is impossible and you say now wait a minute what about those who are far from God what about those who who don't yet know God or who choose to disobey or to run the other way 
Don't they still love? Yes, in fact, they do. But that's the benefit of the astounding measure of God's love is, is we as the world, we get to benefit from God's overspilling amount of love. So love exists in our world because God is love and, and the measure that we accept and realize God's presence in our life, it, it measures the amount of, that we're able to love and to be loved. See, all mankind, fallen though we are, benefit from God's love because God is love. Even those far from God get to experience love because God is love but love without a relationship with God will always be limited not because God is limited but because we are limited because we are fallen because we are tainted you see in in human love we dilute it our selfishness dilutes our ability to love and be loved unrealist expectations impact our ability to love and to respond to love sin counters love and that takes us back to that box you see that box is very functional it's a great box it's not a cedar chest it's not a safe both of those things hold some pretty um, valuable things as far as boxes go this box does not it holds trash <laughs> you see that's the difference that's what we need to exchange today when we talk about love is we need to exchange what I'm going to call so so love it's that tainted, uh, conditional love that, that we experience. It's the love that says, I love you on your wedding day, and yet ends in divorce a few years down the road. It's the love that places expectations on others, and when those expectations go unmet, we're left lost and broken and unfulfilled. It's, it's the love that says, I love you, but. That's the so-so love. And we need to exchange that for what I'm going to talk about next. You see, that so so love that we love through in, human, uh, in our human experience all changed in that first Advent. Advent, the word, is the Latin word that means coming. And so the question is what came that first Advent to change all this? Love came in the form of a baby. You see, God's plan to remedy so so love was in the form of his incarnated son. A very familiar verse you're, you're um, familiar with. It's just the first part of the verse. For God so loved. And so this morning, I want us to discuss what it means to be so loved. What it means to replace that so, so love with the fact that we are so loved. You know, what's in interesting about this whole concept is, uh, Lene reminded me this after the first service, is when we play the white elephant game, we spend every ounce of energy we have trying to get the good gift, don't we? In fact, we don't even open some gifts. We leave them unopened because we see something that is kind of functional and we like. And yet in life, when the game is real, when it comes to love, we do just the opposite. Let me give you some examples. So loved is the beauty of the Garden of Eden. Perfectly created, perfectly balanced, a world without sin, where relationships are pure, where man walks hand in hand with God. In Genesis chapter 1 and 2 and 1 1, we read, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and God saw all that he made, it said in verse 31, and it was very good. But we, man, we chose the so so love that left us exposed we chose an apple <laughs> Genesis 3 12 when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye that's you know it's kind of suspect isn't it and also desirable for gaining wisdom she took some of it and ate it and she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it and so we exchanged rather than holding on to what was pure and good we exchanged that so loved for the so so love of an apple so loved is the Passover lamb where the Israelites are enslaved in, in the land of Egypt and God says, I'm gonna take you out of this land, I'm gonna give you freedom and I'm gonna destroy the firstborn of all creation. If you'll just put the Passover lamb, this blood over your door, I'm gonna, the death angel's gonna pass over you. It says this, Exodus 12, 12, on that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals and I will bring judgment on all gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. 
The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. But we chose the so-so love of a golden calf. And so God takes us out of out of the land of Egypt, out of cap- captivity. And then in verse in Exodus thirty-two two, we read this. And Aaron answered them, "Take off your gold earrings and your that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing, and bring them to me." He took what they had handed him and made into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. And so we exchanged the freedom from slavery for an idol in the shape of a golden calf. So loved is a beautiful temple where God resides with us. It's Solomon so intricately built where sacrifices repair the broken relationships and and replace that sin with a perfect sacrifice and yet we chose to leave the temple and we built our own idols and we sacrificed on our own altars in 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 31 we read Jeroboam built shrines on high places and appointed priests from all sorts of people even those who were not Levites and offered sacrifices on the altar on the 15th day of the 8th month the month of his own choosing He offered sacrifices on the altar he had built at Bethel and so he instituted a festival for the Israelites and went up to the altar to make offerings. And so we exchange God's presence with us in the temple for our own altars, for our own idols, for our own sacrifices. So when God is left out of the so loved picture, love becomes so, so loved. We choose selfishness over relationship we choose slavery and sin over freedom from sin we choose to worship the things we create rather than the creator who creates and what does that leave us it leaves us uncertain it leaves us shameful it leaves us broken and hurting and that's the trouble even though God's story is a pure story of love unblemished love and the word used here is agape in the in the for God so loved passage which means unconditional love we choose in our white elephant exchange to bypass that perfect love for the so so tainted love of human brokenness for God so loved the world you see Advent's a love story and God had a plan The scripture that I want to to read this morning found in John chapter 1 is a story of in a different way that the Advent story is told. In John 1, 1 through 14, we read this. In the beginning, the word was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Verse 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though he was, and the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That's us, for God so loved. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen the glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. And so love moved from heaven's throne to earthly neighborhoods. The love story of Advent is the incarnation of Jesus in the form of love, bringing all the glory and all the perfect love from God the Father so that we could experience that's the love story of Advent. I would encourage you, if you want to refresh uh, yourself on, on Advent and the true meaning, read the Gospel of John this Advent season. Read First John. Spend some time. So what does so loved look like? What does it mean to be so loved? Well, this morning, I thought that uh, I would let you hear the story maybe from someone who would help us better understand that.
Lord, I'm troubled. I don't understand what you're asking through your angel Gabriel. Oh, I understand becoming a mother. Even though I'm unmarried, I know about birth and babies. You created me. You know I'm a virgin. So how can this be possible? If it is to be, what is so special about me? I'm just a common Jewish girl, nothing special, nothing unique. Are you sure, Lord? I'm so unworthy. Do you know what this will do to Joseph? Even though our marriage was arranged long before this, I know he loves me. What will this mean for our future? This child? Will the Son of God you've spoken of be fatherless? Lord, I have so many questions. I'm uncertain about what is happening, yet I'm your servant. I know you love me, so let your will be done in me. Be 
What have you done? How could you embarrass me like this? Aren't you a sh What have you What have you done? How could you embarrass me like this? Aren't you ashamed? I confess that's what I was thinking when I heard the news of Mary's pregnancy. I had been faithful, I had taken our vow seriously, and then this? What would people think of me? Or her? I didn't want to divorce myself from her. I loved Mary. But I, I, I didn't want her to be disgraced in front of our friends and family. Then I had that dream. That dream explaining what God was doing in Mary. And wow! My thoughts were just a whirlwind. I knew about the promised Messiah. I had heard about his coming since I was a little boy, but this was not what I expected. Not at all. This wasn't what anyone expected. Lord, why me? Why did you choose Mary? We're both so young, and we don't know the first thing about being parents, especially to the Son of God. Why would you want it to happen like this? I know how hard this will be, facing everyone and trying to explain all this, but I trust you. I don't fully understand your ways, but I know you love me, so I'll face the future with Mary, trusting that you know what's best. Sure, he must have been surprised at where this road had taken him. Cause never in a million lives would he have dreamed of Bethlehem. And standing at the manger. He saw with his own eyes The message from the angel come to life And Joseph said, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade And why him? He's just the ruler in the world Why here? Inside this stable filled with hay And why her? She's just an ordinary girl And now I'm not one to second guess What angels have to say But this is such a strange way To save the world Think of how it could have been If Jesus had come as he deserved There would have been no Bethlehem No lonely shepherds at his birth But Joseph knew the reason 
love had to reach so far and as he held the savior in his arms he must have thought why me i'm just a simple man of trade and why him with all the rulers in the world why here inside this stable filled with hay and why her she's just an ordinary girl and now i'm not one to second guess what angels have to say but this is such a strange way to save the world. Oh, oh, oh. And now I'm not a one to second guess what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way to save the world. This is such a strange way, a strange way, a strange way to save the world. Ooh. You see, that's the love story of Advent. It's not Mary and Joseph's story, although that's a beautiful love story. It's that through an unlikely virgin and a common carpenter, love incarnate could be born. Could be born so that we could exchange the unbrokenness and the unworthy and the unlikely and the inordinary and the common for the so loved of God, for God so loved. For God so loved that he sent his only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life for God so loved put your name there for God so loved you that he gave his son and that word gave means to give without expectation to bestow without anything in return that first advent God gave his son with no expectation it was unconditional that word agape it was perfect it was for you and that love compels us that love compels us first it compels us to move for God so loved the world that he sent his son I like the, the message translation it says the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood I read one translation and it said Jesus put on man bones and moved into the neighborhood you see that's what so loved is about love also so loved also compels us it motivates us to act that verse goes on to say whoever believes will not perish so there's an action step in response to that sent love and we see that all through the advent story don't we that exchange Mary this unlikely of Hebrew girls this uncommon mar unmarried young girl exchanges that she goes from being a nameless virgin to the favored one Mary the mother of the son of God and Joseph this, this man who's not a prince he's not a soldier nothing special just an everyday ordinary carpenter he moves from shame and embarrassment to obedience he moves from thoughts of divorce to become the earthly father of a heavenly king even the shepherds those unwelcome smelly nomads who weren't allowed to even be in the presence of good Jewish folks because of what they did moved from the mountains to the manger and they were motivated when they left to sing praise and glorify God. And those shepherds, those Gentile stargazers from thousands of miles away, moved from the far east to Bethlehem. 
and they were motivated to give those gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh that were fit for a king. That's what being so loved does. It moves us. It motivates us to act. It's exchanging that so-so of uncertainty, of shame, unmet expectations, brokenness, and loss for the love of the presence of God, Emmanuel, with us. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. For God so loved that he gave. He sent his son for you, for me. And Jesus came that we might have hope in these uncertain times, that we might have that peace that passes understanding in the busyness of Christmas, joy in the presence of Christ who came. I like the way that this is all summed up in Romans chapter 8. It says this, So what do you think? With God on our side, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? I'm so absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus our master has embraced us for God so loved so this morning I have a question for you how does this Advent love this so loved move you what does it motivate you to do on your worship guide on the back there's a little heart so if you take that up I want you to look at that for just a moment I want to give you some action steps You see, because this is just a bunch of words unless we respond in some way. And so inside that heart, you may need to write some things that you need to exchange, some of those so-so things that we've embraced, that you've embraced for the so loved of God. Maybe unmet expectations or broken relationships or sin or abuse or addiction or whatever it is that you've exchanged for that so loved that God sent. Just write that in the middle of that heart as a reminder then around the heart you see there are several letters those letters represent some things that that I think are action steps let's say the R is relationship and recommitment you may be listening or you may be here this morning and maybe you've never really accepted this relationship with God and so you've lived in that so so love of the world and to fully understand it you need to turn your life to him or you need to recommit your life to him maybe circle that r or just write an r in that in that heart maybe the uh the s stands for serving maybe you've been a part of this body or the body where you attend and you just come and you go and you're kind of inconspicuous and maybe you're moved or motivated this morning to say you know i need to serve i need to find a place to serve maybe god is speaking to your heart about something specific in ministry well just circle that s or place an s in that heart maybe the b stands for baptism maybe your whole life you've just uh you've kind of watched others be baptized but you've never on your own faith said you know what it's time for me to be obedient and so maybe you just need to circle that b and say i'm willing to be baptized or put that in the heart maybe the v stands for volunteering The old adage is true that 20% of the people in the church still do 80% of the work, 80% do 20. You know what? It'd be wonderful if we could change that, and that starts with you. So maybe you need to circle that volunteer and say, you know what? I'm ready to, to, to step forward. And maybe the G stands for giving. And no, I'm not just talking about your money. I'm talking about what can you give in the way of your talents and your treasure of your time. Those are action steps. Now, they're only part action steps because all I've had you do is circle a letter right now. The real action step comes in in the fact that then you need to let one of us know. And so maybe when you turn in your connection card, you write a B or an R or an S or a V, whatever it is, to let us know that you've made that decision and we can follow up with you and say, what can we do to help you? For God so loved, and that so loved moves us. It motivates us. That's my challenge this morning. I want you to know that you are so loved. 
I want you to know that you are so loved that God sent his only son. The question is, how do we respond? Father, we thank you for your great love. I can't even imagine what it must have been like for Jesus to leave the throne room of heaven to take on these man bones and to come into this broken world that had rejected, that chooses idols, that chooses an apple, that chooses time away from you instead of your presence. Father, help us this morning to understand that you love us and that rather than exchange that so love for so, so love, we need to turn that around. So Father, I pray that you would strengthen us to move, that you would strengthen us to be motivated in response to this love story. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. We're the Rhymers. Uh, currently, we live in Harrington. We're fairly new to the area, and we're glad to be here. We're going to light our candles this morning. <clears throat> Lighting a candle is a simple way we show the power that light has over darkness. The lighting of the Advent candles reminds us of the hope, peace, and joy we have amidst the darkness of the world. We begin the Advent season by lighting the candle of hope. During the first week of Advent, we saw how we can exchange our discouragement and despair for the hope found in Christ. The second candle of Advent is the candle of peace. During the second week of Advent, we discover that peace is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of Christ. When our peace is found in Christ, it is a blessing that overflows in every direction of our life. The third candle of Advent is the candle of joy. During the third week of Advent, we walked in the shoes of Mary, the shepherds, and the wise men to discover joy, a joy found in experiencing Jesus. Once we experience that joy, it is contagious to others. Fourth can the fourth candle of uh, Advent is the candle of love. Today we have heard and seen that so loved means God's love came down from heaven in Jesus and that act of love uh, motivates us to act in love towards others we have a responsive reading uh, join us as we read this together God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so, so that, that we, we might have eternal life through him this is real love not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins dear friends since God loved us that much we surely ought to love each other amen thank you Reimers we are closing in worship today, and at first thought, this might not come on your radar as a Christmas song, but I think as we sing it, you'll find it just as fitting as I did, especially in light of today's message. So stand with us. Come, are you weary? Come, are you thirsty? Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness and find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world 
that he gave us his one and only son to say for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever the power direct your attention to that wall and that is the gift of so love that we're taking with us today so take that with you join us again on christmas eve if you're here have a great week everybody